line and I think we heard Olivia talk a little bit about the rebounding issue. I want to get into that in a minute. Uh, the game has changed and Princeton has changed with it. Uh, they're capable of putting up a lot of numbers. Ball's going to go out of bounds. It should be Lafayette basketball and it will be so they'll get it as it went off the hands of a Richmond Ari Regua who is 6'9", 230 out of Ewing, New Jersey. Richmond Ari Regua. Princeton comes out straight man to man. I'm sure we'll see the same from Lafayette. By That's Justin Jaworski to Miles Cherry, and he'll do a handoff, fighting through that pretty nicely with Llewellyn. And a first shot about 17 feet away for Alex Petrie. The Leopards up by two. To your point, Gary, about fundamental basketball, I mean, that was just a simple little handoff, but I like the way not only Miles Cherry set himself, but the way Alex Petrie came off uh, that, that little dribble handoff. Nice job that time by Jalise. As they'll go to, that's a wide open three. Not always the easiest shot to make. And right. it was not made by Jose Morales. And Lafayette quickly down the floor in the person of Isaac Suffren as they quickly work it around the perimeter. Well, Morales not the go-to guy offensively. And Lafayette played the right shooter. Not making that triple was Alex Petrie. He has 16 of them. He makes them at 31%. Kennedy boy. There is a nice drive by Devin Kennedy yeah. who puts it up and ties the ball game. Right, so one on one in a full court. Gary, he is so, so tough. Miles. Gary will find Jalice. Who finds Jaworski. Alex open again. Decided not to take that one. Palace down the middle, puts it up, and goes. Tough shot. Absolutely well done over the big guy. So Palace coming off a good game, picks up where he left off. For two Leopards. That is a big guy, 6'9", 230 in the middle. Princeton has always had very important centers to run their offense. That shot missed by Kennedy. Surprised to see Will Gadsden not getting a lot of time. He was one of their guys a couple of years ago. Petrie, not this time, as the ball bounces off the back of Kennedy before the rebound is collected by Morales. Jaworski picks him up from the corner. Trying to take the lead, they will not. Rebound by Ariz Aguza. Stepping out of bounds, Jolis. And Palace is pleading his case. A really good that comes down with it, Gary, and then Paulus picks his pocket, but as he turns up court, let's see if we got a look at it. Watch Paulus's foot. There he stepped the again. second step, which right. is the one that stepped out of bounds. Good call. Paulus wanted a push. Step back. Kennedy, he's going to get fouled. It'll be a three shot foul. This one is on Jaworski. You know, that's a product of the scouting report. There's no way in the world they want to give Devin Kennedy much room to shoot. But that time, Jaworski got a little too close. Kennedy is a absolutely fabulous foul shooter. 22 for 23 on the season. They're at 76% on the year as a team. But certainly uh, that number has not been created by him. He's well over 90%. Well, since he was 22 for 23, you couldn't jinx him, right? Not yet. <laughs> and now he's got a third shot and could give Princeton their first lead of the game. By the way, in our open, I didn't have enough time to comment on your tie. The only thing I'm lacking tonight is a jar of mustard uh, to put on the, the hot dog that is sitting next to me. <laughs> but Merry, Merry Christmas to you, too. Well, at least I'm not a green, so I'm in the <laughs> Right. You did not wear any red, nor did you wear any green. Jaworski will get pounded as he'll get fouled by Morales. And that should be a two-shot foul. Here it is. Once again, coming off the dribble handoff. This time, Jaworski just explodes off of it. And, boy, he took a shot to the across the face. So I saw him grimace, Gary, but good news. He gets up. He looks no worse for the wear. Former football player, so he's used to getting hit a little bit. He was a quarterback in high school and an outstanding one. Shrinksville, PA. He, too, is a terrific foul shooter. He's now 21 for 23 on the season. And he can give Lafayette the lead back. And does. And Lafayette's going to bring some pressure, a little man-to-man, -man, a little soft pressure, Gary, just to show it. 
Llewellyn hasn't taken a shot yet. He was recruited by Stanford, Virginia, Wake Forest. He had 20. Two points against Iona. Nice move inside. That one by Ariraguza. Keep an eye on that matchup, Gary. That was way too easy. Princeton back up by one. Suffering. Step back for Mile. For three. Got, oh, it looked good. All the way, that looked good. Good possession. A lot of good movement right there. Quickly, Kennedy. Didn't like what he saw. Backs it all up. To start all over again. Mitch Henderson, their head coach, in his eighth season, played at Princeton, class of 98. 137 and 81 in his career. Played for Pete Carrill a couple of years. Nice pass inside to Ariba Guzzi. He does it all. And Mitch Henderson uh, is off to the best start since the legendary Pete Carrill had this team way back when. Pete, of course, who won 514 games. And there again is Alex Petrie. Petrie now with four, nine eight. I really, really like the way Lafayette's offense is moving. They're in a great rhythm. Petrie so far looks like the Petrie of old in this one. Way outside. That doesn't go easy. Rebound. There's not a black shirt anywhere near the basketball. Came right down to Miles Cherry. Jalees. He wants to go. He'll go baseline. Suffering. Suffering for three. Good look. Wouldn't drop. 9 8. That's Stevens. Stevens up. He'll get fouled on the play by Jalice. And we're going to get ready for our first timeout of the basketball game. 9 8. And there, you'll get a look at Petrie. Pull up jumper. Our pregame show tonight was presented by Coca Cola. We invite you to experience the Coke side of life. And our starting lineups, as always, prepared by Papa John's. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John's. Papa John's fed us tonight. It was better ingredients, better pizza. <laughs> At the foul line is Miles Stevens, 76% free throw shooter. He is actually known for his defense. He was the Ivy League Defensive Player of the Year last year. But he scored 19 points against Duke in their last outing. Second team all Ivy last season. And he makes one out of two. Yeah, he was the one bright spot in an otherwise dismal trip down to Chapel Hill. Or actually, they played that game in New York. Yes. They still played No, Duke. they did not. They played <laughs> that game at the Cameron. Cameron. Oh, yeah, pinging it around. Defense has stepped up a little bit for the Tigers. Driving Jaworski up and in. Tough shot. He dropped it. We're tied at 10. We're talking a lot about Princeton's backcourt. How about Jaworski and Petrie getting it done early on? Kennedy, 17 feet away. Mm. Smooth. Got to follow him around that screen. He is so de almost indefensible. That is Dylan Hastings who's in the ball game for Lafayette. 6'8 sophomore. Number 44. And let me correct myself. That's Lucas Jarrett who's in there. 6'7 junior, Northport, New York. And that one is dropped again by Petrie, and that's a triple that gives Lafayette the lead. Oh boy, it's, it would be great to get Alex Petrie, get him going within this system, and so far it's been flawless for him. He has gotten it going. That shot does not drop. E.J. Stevens with a rebound. Quickly down the floor. He's going to try to pop a triple. It will not go. Not a bad shot. Everybody backed away from him. But he hit the back of the iron. Yeah, you can run your offense for the whole shot back and not get that good a look. Boy, I'm not pretty. sure Kennedy misses very often. Mm, mm, mm. Johnny has nine points already. Yeah. We haven't even heard from the freshman superstar, Llewellyn. He got five lead changes already. There goes Petrie. Not this time. Had a good look. But he did run into the big guy at 6'9". May have thrown him off a bit. Llewellyn ended up losing the basketball. Turnover. Princeton, that's their first. Now we'll see Dylan Hastings in the game. I don't think it's an overstatement, Gary, to suggest that Fran O'Hanlon has defended Princeton more often than any other coach in the country. 
Think about it. All those years at Penn, and then we are Princeton's second most played rival outside of the Ivy League. This is game number 71, John, between the two teams. Princeton leads 51 to 19 in the series, and Princeton has won the last three. Nice play, won't go. Now Alex has to get out of the way before he gets stepped on. He had a tough angle to drop that shot, but he almost did it. Llewellyn gets it back outside, and that shot would not drop. Taken by DeRosier, who is a 6'7 sophomore out of Quebec. He played a great deal last year as a freshman, not in the starting lineup this season. Ooh. Well, that's a nice way to pass to yourself. <laughs> that's right. Get out, get out, get out. <laughs> John, that's not what they call a chest pass, right? They always talk about <laughs> chest passing. Right. That shot does not fall. Dylan Hastings trying to drop a three. You love it when your teams act like a tossback. Yeah. Your teammates, your teammates act. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Down inside they go. That's Sebastian Much who got rid of it. And getting the rebound. The ball just wouldn't mm. come close enough to a leopard for them to get it. Much. Almost stolen away. In fact, almost handed. Ball slapped around. Good job defensively. A lot of help. EJ Stevens with the hands. Yeah, when you dribble too much and don't go anywhere, bad things can happen. Good defense by the Leopards. From the corner. And that will not go. Battle for the rebound. And they're going to call a foul here on Dylan Hastings. And Hastings saying that foul should have been on them. It was not Princeton by one. Stay with us. Or uh, Bucknell walk away with this thing. They, they are very impressive so far this year. You had to be impressed with Bucknell's two-point loss to Ohio, Ohio State, State yeah. just this week. So the league has fared very, very well in the non-conference schedule. All right, we've had four ties and five lead changes. And right now Princeton by one. Is it going to be by four? It is. Up and in by Sebastian Much. His fifth triple of the year hasn't been all that successful, just 22% from beyond the arc, but that would count it. Hastings wanted to take that shot, decided against it. That's Tyrone Perry in the game. Way outside, Kyle Stout will drop it. <laughs> Kyle's been hot of late. Did you hear the oohs and ahs with Dylan Hastings passed up the layup? This is how the game has changed. Gave up the two, and Kyle Stout made it worthwhile. You only get two for a layup, though, right? right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay, that one is drain. And Jerome the Rosier knew it as soon as he let it go. His sixth triple of the game of the year. Princeton by four. Wide open. And that does not fall for Hastings. Hastings has four threes. He's been knocking them down at 29%. Drive inside Kennedy. No. Rebound. Hastings. Boy, he can't get to the rim, though. Come on, Kyle. How about Kyle again? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing but nylon. When he catches it with that kind of posture, with that kind of demeanor, you love to see that. You want shooters to have that mentality. John, we were so critical of him as a freshman sophomore. He hesitated yeah. before he would shoot the ball. He's not doing that anymore. He's putting it up. He knows he's open. Well, there's a tough drive. Morales up and in. Jose Morales with the bucket. Man, diminutive. Somebody has to help. Tyrone Perry's in the game, Gary. You and I talked about him last game. He, again, it was just kind of a coming out party for him. He's averaging 3.7 again. Hastings hands the ball off to Perry. Stout thought about it, but he did get picked up rather quickly that time. Yeah, Nine got... on the shot clock. Nice move. No finish. Quickly down the floor, and it's a good catch of the basketball, but nowhere to go with it. Of course, Sebastian Much. I saw Penn, no. You know what, Gary? I, and, and no argument from Fran O'Hanlon. I, you know, I talked about the charge and the block, and this was a, a, a good call. I, I <laughs> might have been inside the circle. That could have been in. It could have been out of bounds. To watch him slide. Uh, yep, he's sliding. You're right. I, yeah, I'd love to watch the offensive player, Gary. If he's under control and he's sliding to avoid the charge, I don't like the charge call. But there the slide was to get the charge. Exactly. And, uh, it didn't happen. Fourth team foul against the Leopards. Princeton's only committed one foul. Well, the by three. The defender had to slide because the offensive guy slid, and there, therein is the block. 
That was uh, well, very well defined. Yes, uh, well, I'm, nice job. You're the English teacher. I've been hanging around you for a while now. It's starting to rub off. That may go down as your most lucid point of 2018. <laughs> lucid. There yeah. you go. What does lucid mean? If it's, if it's good, I did that. Thinking about it, driving, and kicking. Here we go from the corner. Three. No, doesn't go. The Leopards will get there first. E.J. Stevens with a rebound. Like that cut. Like like he that. made it. You see how their vertical hard cuts, Gary, help the offense move well. Miles Cherry. No. Goes Llewellyn. He fell backwards. On a lot of rebounds tonight, it's been all white shirts. Yeah, this is not your your father's Princeton offense. I mean, they're they're looking to play. They've got the talent. Again? Not this time. But inside Miles, and it does drop. He thought it wasn't going to. It fell. 22-21. Prince doing a good job here again, playing very well, holding their own in just about every aspect. Carry with three rebounds already. Kennedy, pull up. Oh, he finally misses a shot. Everett can take the lead. EJ, nice hesitation move. Wow, that was pretty. Yeah. EJ Stevens. He's all a 6 3, Gary. He's got great elevation on that shot and a soft touch to finish. Way outside again. It's much. Not this time. Here comes EJ gliding down the floor. Release. Dworski. Oh, yeah, really moving fluidly. Inside Kyle Stout. No. And we're going to get a foul on Stout. That's his first. Team's fifth. We've got a timeout. 23 22 Leopards. The tight all the way. was certainly an outstanding player at Princeton. But if the Leopards keep holding him to these kind of numbers, that might not happen. Brandon Sean Good is in, John. Oh, yeah. B big, long, tall freshman out of central Pennsylvania. And good point by Olivia because uh, Jalen Llewellyn is certainly a catalyst for this offense. There Inside, he is. Side up. No, doesn't go. He, he may have heard Olivia's report. He wanted to get a couple of points. Steal. Good job by Petrie to stop that penetration. They'll go the other way and get themselves open for three. Llewellyn didn't take it. Morales into the middle. Slides over, throws it up, no and way. it drops. No way. Wow. Circle around that one, Gary. I mean, how did Morales get that one off, let alone have it go in? Lead change number seven. Largest lead by Princeton, four. Largest lead by Lafayette, two. Petrie. Drops it over to Suffren. Suffren wants to go. He'll get fouled on the play. Will they give him two? One of the tweaks that Fran has made in the offense, Gary, is opening up the center a little bit. And that allows players, you see that there's nobody down on that side of the low post. And there's better cohesion. And, and when you've got players like E.J. Stevens and, and Suffren and Alex Petrie, guys that can put it on the floor and get to the rim, it really creates more space for their uh, their plays off the, uh, off the dribble. A foul was caused by Ryan Schwieger, who's in the game for the first time, 6'6 sophomore. And Suffren, who is a 72% free throw shooter, misses his first. Lafayette shooting 74%. That's normally right around their average. They like to get it up or actually around 80. You love this guy's upside. He is going to be. He's only a freshman. He's got ideal size. He's quick. He's strong. Llewellyn up on the big guy and dropped it. But they use their body. Kennedy and Llewellyn, they get their body into the defender no matter how big he is. Finished nicely. Going to go suffering. Alex, Alex, quick pull up, doesn't get it. Good defense by Llewellyn, here he comes. Approaching the six minute mark in the first half. Drive up and in, nice move by Miles Stevens. His first field goal of the game. Boy, did he explode to the rim. 
Fran O'Hanlon's going to get a timeout here. Well, they have their largest lead of the game. It's five, and the Leopards have not scored the last couple of times down the floor. The numbers are good, though. One turnover by Lafayette, two turnovers. Comes out. Princeton, of course, plays at the Jadwood Center. There you got to look at Mitch Henderson. He won more games in his first five years than any other Princeton coach except Petey Carrillo. The professor. Yeah. We thought he might be here tonight. That shot is dropped. That's a big one. Justin Jaworski off of Fran's timeout. Yeah. Gets his 25th of the year. He's a leads the team in threes. Yeah, they needed a bucket, and Fran drew one up. Usually they let the players read and react. That time it was designed. Good hands by Stevens. They get it in the middle. That's always troublesome. Down, up. No. Much too hard. Off the backboard by Ariza Guzzo. Good defense by Miles Cherry. Release. Look for the back cut. Wasn't there. Didn't make the pass. Wide open. Justin Jaworski, two in a row. Sure. Lafayette has the lead back. All about the pick and roll, and you got to get help on that. And when you do, the defender who gives help, his player is open. Well executed by Lafayette. What a great timeout, huh? Oh. Five-point lead evaporated just like that. They were struggling offensively on a couple of possessions. France saw the largest deficit. Called timeout. Things have changed. Taking it inside. That's a tough play for Alex Petrie to stop. Yeah, he was matched up against a taller player. Nice move by Miles. And he'll get fouled. That last bucket was by Schwieger. And the foul will be on Ari Raguzzo. Yeah, they, they found the mismatch. And watch the spin move to the baseline by Miles Cherry. Gets it down low. Watch. Spin real quick. Boom. Now he's got the defender in trouble. In jail, under the rim. And do nothing but foul him. Miles from the line. It's 39%. Right up there among the league leaders in rebounding in the Patriot League. Lafayette just two for five now from the foul line. You see a bit of a line change for Princeton, Gary, and you and I talked about this during the break. One element that is very different in recent years for Princeton is they've got ten players averaging double-figure minutes. That never happened in the old days. I mean, uh, Coach Carrill would uh, have his rotation of basically six guys and occasionally a seventh. Mitch Henderson, uh, and again, a lot of it has to do with the depth and the talent level. Well, P would run an offense yeah. that took, at back then, what, 40 seconds. That's going to be goaltending. Sean Good got up, but the ball was coming down. Good so shot. Llewellyn gets credit for the bucket. That's what Sean Good loves to do. He loves the block shots, but look at how much elevation Llewellyn gets right here. And that ball was clearly in the cylinder, but... And it was coming down. Yep. Yeah. So Princeton now by two. Jalise. Oh, they wanted a walk, and I think they uh, probably should have gotten one. Mitch Henderson was all over that play. DJ down inside. Jalise. Go back. The defender in. And put it up, and no. Doesn't go. Miles Cherry shook it loose. Yeah, it's a 50-50 ball that Llewellyn just, he's much quicker. You talked about his quickness. Wow, look at, look at this. Wow, well, that's an unbelievable. It doesn't go. He kind of deserved it. He didn't get it. Wow. That's a little scary. <laughs> Heck, I'd call a timeout after that play. When I talked to their <laughs> SID <laughs> about him, I said, he, he's really quick, right? He said, yeah, he'll, he'll get a rebound and take it down the floor faster than you can imagine. I said, how's his defense? He goes, I don't watch defense. <laughs> <laughs> Jalise can't get it to fall. Where they know where people are. And no drop. Oh, that's a good pass. Wasn't expected. They got a little lucky there. Ball came right back to Llewellyn. It's an instinctive thing, but the great, great, great players dropped that on the floor. Wow. Oh, it was right there, wasn't it? And he thought, oh, they're going to get it back. So Lafayette a little snake bitten on this Ooh. possession. Long shot, long rebound, and nothing wrong with the defense. Just a bad break with the rebound. It was a bad pass, and it ended up right rolling right to Princeton. Kennedy drops it. Coming to mid-range. Doesn't go. Look at Kennedy get up. She whisked. Come on now. Turn around. No. 
Good job. Boy, they are scrapping for the rebound. Jerome DeRosier was pushing people around all over. That's a foul. We got a timeout down on the floor, 32-30. How about Justin Jaworski with back-to-back -back triples? The Leopards down by two. Worldview that he applies somehow to the game and to his relationship with his players and uh, yeah, he, he's a he's a light bulb man. Things light up when you're around Joe Madden. You know, you talk to anniversaries, John. You just uh, gave me a uh, anniversary really apropos to tonight. Yeah, it, uh, this is the day in history when James Naismith first nailed up the peach basket. And uh, I just took mine down. <laughs> you played on one, I know. <laughs> Come on, Isaac. He's 0 for 3 from the line. There you go. Princeton by one. Good minutes by that young man. A little bit of a watermark as Princeton played Lehigh in game two, and they lost that game 72 to 57. But Llewellyn did not play, and Kennedy did not play in that game. So their two best players were not there. Back and in, Ari Raguzo. Now he's touched the ball twice down there, Gary, and he's had two point blank layups. That is, you would think, just keep throwing the ball to the kid. Lafayette has no answer down there. Princeton by three. Tried to get the ball to Sean Good. We're going to get a kick here, so Lafayette will keep the basketball. Although Mitch Henderson saying that ball went off the top of his leg. He extended his leg, so I think that's the lead. Now, Isaac Suffern was telling Tyrone to finish that play off the screen, but I like the decision because Good was open, and Tyrone was going to bounce it to him. I think, I think uh, Sean would have had an easy layup. Well, Lafayette right now probably has their best shooting team out there as uh, Petrie comes back out. Jalise comes out. So does Jarrett and Kyle Stout. And, of course, you know about Jaworski. We'll get it to Palace. We'll drop it right off to Kyle. Jarrett for three. A little short. Easy rebound for Kennedy. Kennedy crossover, picked up by Jalice. Stevens will go. Stevens, no. But a re re A rerun. <laughs> a re rerun. He's got six all at point blank range. He actually has eight. Wow. Yeah, he came in averaging nine. Yeah. Again, they have that five point lead. That's the largest of the game. They've had it twice. Wide open. And again, short. Oh. Almost. Oh, that should be Lafayette ball. It is. Good hustle by Palace. Yeah, that's what he can do. And Palace is a, the closest thing we have to an enforcer physically. And he's got to engage. He's got to get himself more involved in the game. Randall Halen brings out Lucas Jarrett. And the first thing he says to him, those are good shots. Absolutely. He wants him to keep taking that shot. Yep. They're built. They're baked into the system. Jalice drives. Jalice like up and like in. It. Nice like move. It. Like it, like it, like it. Got to engage. Paulus has to be a factor. 15 points, 10 rebounds against Rosemont in the last ball game. He missed the game this year with a thumb injury. That shot is dropped out of the corner by Miles Stevens for three. Is ninth. Well, he's capable. You, you get the sense that Princeton at five and five has a has a lot of growing to do. Nice move by Paulus. Al will be on Kennedy. Leopards need two good possessions. This one right here to drop a couple of foul shots, and they should get the ball again. Yeah. Boy, they recognize the matchup. Mismatch right there. Kennedy at 6-3. Caught down low against the 6-7. Polish release. Nobody in the game with uh, more than one foul. That was the first time. Kennedy. Release 58% free throw shooter, but he always looks like it should be better than that. Yeah. He has a nice release and good rotation. I agree with you, Gary. Nothing wrong mechanically with his shot. It's just for some reason a little, a little strong. On both, Stop on those two. He'll come out. They'll bring in the big guy, Sean Good. Play some defense. 
Inside, good up. No, too quick is Llewellyn. Yeah, I mean, it's all about that quick elevation. He was there before Sean Good could get his arm up. up it's down by six. They're going to play for one. There is about a six-second difference between game clock and shot clock. We'll have stats, we'll have highlights. We'll have Joe Kinney at the half. Oh, Jaworski got hit hard. You're going to say that the ball was deflected? Look at Justin. It's like, what do you mean? Should have yeah. been three shots, and they're going to give him the ball. I think that might have been the proverbial makeup call, but still, I'd much rather have Justin Jaworski on the line shooting three. From this angle, it looked like he got hit pretty hard. Well, you saw where the ball went. I mean, there's no way in yeah. the world Justin misses a shot like that. And his reaction was, uh, let's take a look. Well, he got off to a, an electric start. Relatively quiet. Alex with seven points. Jaworski with ten points. Looking for Sean Good. They can't get it. Jaworski will put it up. Won't go. And Sean Good gets the rebound, and they'll get the final possession. Big, big rebound by Sean Good. Way outside. Oh, it does not drop. That would have brought the house down. Instead, we've got ourselves a 41 to 35 halftime score. We've got numbers. We've got highlights. We're just coming into the gymnasium right now. <laughs> I, I, I'm looking at uh, one of the one of the officials said nobody came to get yeah. us. I know that they're not the most popular people in the gym. But we, somebody's got to communicate with them. And I think uh, that's what their their point was. Nobody told them uh, it was time. So Princeton will put it in play. They'll start Luella, Morales, Kennedy, Stevens, and Ariri Guzzo. And Lafayette will start Suffren, Petrie, Jalise, Cherry, and Jaworski. And already Princeton turns the ball over. Just their third turnover john we've had four turnovers that's in this incredible game. i mean that, that is just it's great it's almost unheard of and neither team is like you know slowing things down and they're going after it and they've only turned it over four times collectively release to cherry suffering will get it back to jalice and he'll throw it away he thought petrie was going to step back petrie stepped in so i mentioned no turnovers we've had two i know there you go Watch the player in front of you. Alex made a back a backdoor cut without communicating first with Cherry. Llewellyn is stopped. Nice tee by Suffren. Way outside. That one is dropped by Morales. That one hurt. Yeah, I mean he's he's one of the guys that's not called upon to do a lot of scoring. But that time he came through. And he almost came up with a steal. The Leopards now in a dangerous position, down by nine. Yeah, it, it seems as if Princeton has come out just with a little more intensity defensively. They're using that great quickness that we saw so much about offense on the defensive end now. And they had a good finish to end the first half. Lafayette couldn't buy a bucket in the final minute. Knocked out of bounds. 12 seconds on the shot clock. Good hustle by Stevens to fans on the baseline. Yeah. <laughs> what, what, or did he go get the ball? See, wherever there's no, a ball. he didn't. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Look at him. He was going to take the ball and with the out of bounds play. Rainbow wants a pass right here. He's open. Suffren. Well, I'm going to walk here. And any time you get caught dribbling, over dribbling, Fran. Fran. Did not agree with the call. I didn't agree with it. I thought that Isaac had left his feet, but but then he got rid of it. I, it it yeah. was close because the a Princeton player had gotten his hands on the ball. Uh, they have come out with a couple of big triples. That one by Llewellyn, his first. He now has nine points. And Fran wants a timeout. And Fran wants to know why there was a walk call. We'll be back. Forty-seven thirty-five. We got it. We got this one. If I don't know this one, forget about no, it. I they gave you an easy one. It's not fair. Really. It'll, they'll get harder. Spent more time with Coach Carrill than I probably deserve. What a.
great guy. No, that that he deserved. It. Well, that's <laughs> good point. <laughs> Zelis wants the back in. Now a fadeaway. And it'll be knocked out of bounds by Princeton as that is off of Ariri Guzzo. You know, a couple of months ago, I went down to see Coach in Princeton and uh, they had a conversation. And eventually, he gave me his annual donation, which he gives religiously. I said, Coach, I didn't come down here to see that, to do this, to, for that. He goes, oh, John, you know, it always comes back to that. Good drive, good bucket. And for Lafayette, a good foul. That's on Ariri Guzzo. That is his second. Basket's good. And this is a good sign for the Leopards. One of the few times that Princeton did not defend the pick and roll well, and it was the freshman, Llewellyn, who did not rotate over. You can't defend the pick and roll, Gary, with just two people. If you do that, you're going to get a layup just like Polish Jalice did. you got to have a third guy help. That's why Princeton did not. Jalice gets the layup. Possibly a three-point play. Palace has nine points. He will sit down as they will bring into the ball game Dylan Hastings. Up it's down by nine. Good, another good timeout by Fran. They come out of the timeout and get a quick three. Kennedy, boy, is he quick? Yeah, I know. Passed up a mid-range jump shot. They're always looking to kick it out, aren't they? Yeah, they know where people are. Again, kicking it out. Found the paint up, oh, and it won't go. And Lafayette rebound. Foul Stout. Shot was missed by Miles Stevens. Good contested rebound by Kyle Stout. EJ got banged. That's a foul. That was one of those. I don't think if possession would have been lost, they would have called it. Possession was lost. They called it. Exactly. Good referees will do that, Gary. You see a little jump switch here. And a good job by EJ Stevens coming off of it. There's the, there's the, uh, the reach in right there. Princeton's defense getting a little more aggressive on that that high handoff in the screen and roll. That's exactly like the kind of thing they would have talked about in the locker room. Exactly. Fouls on Morales. His second, team's third. Trying to anticipate that ball reversal just a little late on it. That's where Lafayette might be able to... It's going to be important now. Prince is going to start overplaying those passes. Lafayette's got to vacate. they got to cut hard without the ball. Take that pressure away. Jaworski. Hastings to EJ. Stevens drops it off. Dallas. Nice. Going up and under. Oh, they're going to call a walk. I don't know that he changed his I'm pivot. I'm not sure feet. either. I didn't think that was a walk. Once you establish your pivot foot, Gary... You know, you don't pick it up. You can pick it up going to the rim. Go, so take a look at his feet. Left foot, left foot, uh, left foot. Oh, there, there it is. is. Okay. Good call. Oh, how about that bucket? Wow, what a bucket by Miles Stevens. Body control was terrific. And let's take a look at it. You didn't see it live. Here it is. Boy, Stevens is, he's an X factor, Gary. Look at the size and the strength. They list him at 6'6", six, six, but with his athletic ability and his, his girth, he can play bigger than that. And he's the kind of guy that can give you an easy bucket when you're struggling, and his ability to get to the rim illustrated right there. The Rosier into the game. Much is into the game. Stevens on the foul line. It's a completed three-point play. It's one for two from the line. And he comes up short. Steve doesn't lose a lot, does Mitch Henderson, when he goes to his bench. He does not. Kyle Stout short. He saw him kind of pull, it, pull his arm back on that one. A little, little tight on it. Talk about a string on your elbow. Yeah. I don't know what happened there. Pulled the string. Kyle Stout is matched up against Llewellyn. My goodness. Kennedy, way outside. Wow. First second half bucket. 38th triple. He leads the team in threes. Jaworski wanted to come back the other way, and having none of it was Sebastian Much who covered up nicely. Here comes Petrie back in. Take a look at the uh, range from Kennedy. Just kind of looks like he's going to triple threat position, and EJ Stevens just can't get his hand up in time. I mean, what do you do? What a quick release. Wow. Oh. Deadly accurate. 
in the matchup. Police. They're going to call this on Llewellyn. <laughs> you know what? It's, it's just a tough one. If I'm, a, if I'm Mitch Henderson, now I'm looking for a little bit of a push off with the offhand, but you didn't see the same elbow. I <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, oh my! Bad inbounds pass. Turnover number five by Lafayette. They had one in the first half. So they thought they could check Princeton napping. Here goes that move. Oh boy! Doesn't get it, however. And a good job by Jalice to go up and shake it loose. EJ. Oh, here comes Llewellyn. Up and in. Oh, he got hurt too. He sprained his ankle. Oh, 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 oh. He is down. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure about that stoppage. Lafayette was in transition. Now, the big news for. Fran's going to ask why they stopped. Not when you're in transition. I mean, Lafayette. Now, if the play stops and they pull it back out, you call time out. Well, we're going to stop it here. We'll be back. Imagine a Wi-Fi system so good, you'll never have to think. So anytime there's a stoppage, we go immediately to the media, but that isn't the, uh, the point in question. The point in question is, how is the game stopped uh, when you're in transition? You stop, yeah, exactly. You stop the play. I when mean, the, once the basket's made, you can yeah. stop the play. That's the, Stop the play. Oh, nice play by Isaac Suffren, and he'll get fouled on the play. And the foul will be called on Schweiger. You stop the play when the play stops, and that's the, uh, you know, that's, that's I'm not the sure key. what the media timeout has to do with it. It had nothing to do with it. Nice three-point play by Isaac Suffren. Isaac with four points. And then the Leopards down by 13. We don't know. Uh, looking for Jalen Llewellyn. Don't see him over there on the bench. Looks like they may have taken him out of the gymnasium to the locker room. Here we're going to get a foul. This will be on Lucas Jarrett, his second. That would be a huge loss for Princeton to it, lose Jalen Lowell. Yeah, yeah. The Rosiers, though, uh, I'm sorry, not the Rosiers. That was uh, Sebastian. Much. Much. And uh, good, strong move to the bucket there. You know, kids. They, they, Six, eight, two, twenty. Yeah, they don't lose a whole lot. But we talked about the depth that Princeton has, and uh, they can just. And different players have different skill sets. They're very, they're very quick and speedy with their starting five, but they bring some big bodies off the bench that can, that can stretch a defense with their three-point shooting as well. He's now four for seven. He is four for eight shooting foul shots on the year. So the Leopards with a chance to gain some ground here inside against Suffren up nothing. Suffren got banged on wow. that play and no call. Way outside, that guy again, that's, that's just Devin like, Kennedy. That's a six-point swing. At least a five-point swing. You know, Suffren should have been at the free-throw line. Instead, Kennedy with a heartbreaker. Wow, he got banged on that. No call. It needs a bucket desperately. Now they're going to call an offensive foul on Suffren. And... That was a good call. Yeah, Princeton started to impose its will defensively, Gary, and you know what Kennedy and Llewellyn can do, but this is just great quickness on the ball defense, right? Here, watch the quickness. I mean, Morales is so quick. He is a great role player, Morales. Oh. He handles the ball well, distributes nicely, and plays tough defense. And When necessary, he is quick to the hole. Like just he's one of those guys that everybody else can play off of. Looking to go. That's Drew Freiberg in there, number five. Well, Kennedy missed. And we're going to get a foul here. Oh, oh well, we're going to get a little upset. Sebastian Much uh, may very well just find himself with a technical foul. No question about it, and I <laughs> maybe Alex Petrie got in his ear a little bit, but uh, 
Things get a little bit chippy. Let's see what happened. Oh, they got tangled up over there, and well, Alex didn't do much. He just got tangled up, and Jeez. then he took a shot. So we got a foul and a foul. Probably a technical. Unless he said something to him, but the uh, the reaction by Much was a little too much. <laughs> I should have said Sebastian. <laughs> They're going to take a look at it to see whether it was flagrant. And we do have a technical, that's for yeah. sure. I don't think it was anything so egregious that, you know, if he throws a throws a, a hand at him or a punch or something like that, it's a little different. So much is going to pick up a couple of fouls here. So it was a flagrant one, which means it's a personal foul. So Alex Petri will shoot two right here. Lafayette will retain possession. But a flagrant uh, flagrant one is not the most egregious kind. So, Gary, give us the uh well, the he's, he's Two fouls yep. on the play, a technical and a hook and hold foul, uh, which is a personal foul. And taking all of the shots. And so far, three for three, Alex Petrie. That's not bad, huh? Yeah, we can do this all night long. Yeah. No way to defend it. One of those things, and again, there's no question about who the the perpetrator was. I mean, it's just... Flagrant one. Plus technical. Plus personal. Plus so personal. two fouls on one play. Four foul shots. Chance for a six-point play. All Alex Petrie. Didn't get it. Alex almost came up with a steal. Watch out, Kennedy. And they're going to call a foul here on Tyrone Perry. Lightning quick. He just needs, you know, most players need a step. He needs, <laughs> he needs like a, a tenth of a step. He just gets a sliver of space and he explodes. He's a senior. 1,381 points coming in. Tackle on another 15 and maybe more right here. So he is approaching. 1,400 points. That's a good shot at getting those tonight. He's now at 1,397. You know, Gary, we had a player here my first four years. One of my first recruits was Tony Duckett. And Devin Kennedy reminds me, Tony was actually drafted by the Atlanta Hawks. And uh, arguably one of the top three or four guards ever to play at Lafayette. Devin Kennedy reminds me of Tony Duckett. Probably shoots it. More purely, a little bit better than Tony. But athletically, very similar. We do see Llewellyn back in the gymnasium as he's loosening up behind the stand. So we may very well see him. Might depend on the score. In, up. And up. Tony got hit right on the arm. Boy, Paul Fellow was right there, but he, t he said the defense went straight up. I. I Lafayette can't catch a break here. Well, we'll try to get another look at that one for you if we can at some point here. Morales. Morales. Mid-range. No, doesn't go. Kicked out of there, but right into the hands of Alex Petrie by Ariri Guza. Let's get a bucket here and keep it interesting. Alex is open, but not for long. Morales covered that up very nicely. There you go. Wow, how nice is that? Great pass from Justin Jaworski. And nice movement by Miles Cherry. Absolutely. But it starts with that initial, you know, initial sequence of the offense. You get the defense moving like that, good things happen. Number five is Drew Freiberg. Inside, no. And now we'll get a foul on Miles Cherry. Well, that's a mismatch, though. I mean, every Guza is just... Such a big force on the interior, Gary. When he gets the ball down around the post, just plays above everybody. As a foul shooter, he's 73%. Has not been to the line tonight. Has eight points. Now they list him at 6'9", and they and they list uh, Miles Cherry at 6'9". And when they stand next to each other, you tell me. Different 6'9"? Oh, yeah. I don't know who does the math at which school. <laughs> well, they're both... Uh, Pretty good academic school. Well, somebody's somebody's adding wrong. <laughs> we have more engineers. The arithmetic isn't working out. <laughs> Young man was born in Nigeria. And he has 
developed nicely in his three years at Princeton. Good defense by Stevens there. Fight through a screen. Jaworski drops it off. Wide open. Well EJ. done. Got to go in. And it will. Basketball guy's got to figure it out, Gary. That was as well executed as an offense could possibly be. Well, we're trying to get it under double figures. The lead for Princeton is 11. Guess who's back? I know. Llewellyn's in there. That doesn't go. Kennedy missed out of the corner. Here come the Leopards. Let's get this thing under 10. Look at that crossover dribble inside. And it doesn't go. Cherry's in a position to get a rebound. Oh, Palace. Yes. Do it. Jillies for three. Impact player, Gary. Not sure there's been a bigger shot for Lafayette yet in this game. Palace Jalice delivering. They get it to win eight. Good defense. Drive. That's a hard shot. Does not drop for DeRosier. Lafayette scores here, and I bet you Mitch Henderson probably gets a timeout, especially oh, a little too deep. You know, the fans, they've seen enough of Alex to expect that to go in. And a foul. Oh, no. Now Jaworski's shaking up a little bit. He's hurt. Well, it's his right elbow, Gary, and boy, you saw the reaction. Is there a tougher kid on the floor? We'll get a timeout down on the floor. 61-55. The Leopards using the triple. E.J. Stevens. Palace. Jalice. We'll be back. See, doesn't work that fast. 75. I'm sorry. <laughs> Justin Jaworski on the line. That's a good sign. Trying to get the Leopards back to within five. And he does just that. Jaworski with 13. And he was grimacing, and he's going to come out right now. So let's see if he goes down and see the trainer or if it's just something he's got to play through. Maybe a bone bruise. Really? Oh. Another. That a pass goes right off the leg and right into the hands of Morales. Leopards with four guys in double figures. So they've had good balance scoring. Morales. Morales. Good defense. Kennedy. Morales is open. Step back. Puts it up. Boy, he's a, he's, he's a he's, player. He's he? a dagger. I mean, he's, he's just not a typical Princeton guy, but especially with the three guards they play with Llewellyn and Kennedy and then Morales, you wouldn't think there'd be room for him. That's their fifth second half triple. Nice catch. Nice play. That's a good pick and roll. Up and in by Jarrett. Pass came from Stevens. Yeah, and they did it in an area where it was very difficult for Princeton to give help on that, Gary. So close to the baseline. So both teams with uh, four guys in double figures. That shot does not go. The Leopards. Uh-oh, uh-oh. They stepped out of bounds. A little too wide. We couldn't see it. That hurt. Yeah, it sure did because Lafayette had a chance to get it to four. EJ lost track of where he was. Let's see if we can see it from our sideline view. And out of bounds, out of bounds. Uh, close. You, have to establish? you can come back in and establish yourself. It's not like football. Kennedy, no. Rebound Stevens. Lafayette on the run. Putting a little pressure on the Princeton defense now. They don't have a lot of shooters out there right now. Here comes Suffern. He's open. Is he a shooter? Oh, yeah. Sure he is. Oh, yeah. The one thing that Fran O'Hanlon instills in his players, everybody, is responsibility for shooting the basketball at the right time, taking the right shot. And Isaac Suffren steps up big time. Princeton's going to talk about it. They will call a timeout down on the floor. 64-61 to Lafayette. Down by 12. Coming back, let's take a look at the last bucket. Well, Gary, I've talked about this a number of times, especially in the last two games. If this young man can do this with as much games, the Cornell and the St. Peter's. France trying to incorporate a lot of young players into a complex system, so it's going to take some time. But, man, if they can pull this one out, it's going to go a long way toward... Watch out. Oh, well, that's a high percentage. Yeah. Miles Stevens with a good first step. He is 10. But it's going to go a long way toward their mental development, their 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 confidence. 
Lafayette was on a 14-3 run. Now 14-5 after that drop. Not the way you wanted to come out of a timeout defensively. Oh boy, <laughs> he had EJ on a yeah, backup. Yeah, he did. He gave up on him. Decided a not to soon. throw the bounce pass. That's what I mean. Oh, I thought he got hit. Don't know about that one. It's a tough move. Like okay, again, Lafayette. Oh, there's the same guy, Stevenson. Miles Stevens, up and in. He's got 12 now. So he becomes the fifth Princeton player in double figures. Yeah, Fran wants to talk about it. They, they, Princeton stopped the bleeding and got the lead back up to seven. Fran wants to get his better offensive group in. Yeah, he didn't have any real yeah. shooters out there. Let's see. You know. <laughs> All right, we've got Petrie, we've got Stout, Cherry, Jalice, and Jaworski. Let's see what we got, high post. Yep, he's coming off that double screen down low. Oh, he didn't give him the ball. Oh, man. And uh, you see what they were going to do, though, Gary? All the attention was to Jaworski coming off the double screen. They had Petrie isolated on this side. They were going to spin back to him. You either have a guard around or a back door. Watch the right side of your screen. Let's see if we can see this. And watch Miles Cherry. He commits watch the foul Petrie. here. Right here. Julius is going to spin back, and they had Petrie back door on this side. Too bad. Man, Drive again. Not this time. A tough angle for that shot. So the Leopards do not give up another bucket, and they throw the ball away. Mm. You know, to Princeton's credit, Gary, I think that Mitch Henderson had the sense that they were relying too much on the three. And out of their timeout, they've gone directly to Miles Stevens, and he's gotten them to the rim. There's Kennedy. Not this time back of Meyer. That's ridiculous. Rebound Llewellyn. Wow. Morales. Drops it to Much. And that doesn't go. And a rebound, Kyle Stout. The Leopards need to score. They've got two stops, but no points. A nice weak side block out by Jaworski because Kennedy was positioning himself for another offensive rebound. Petrie. 17 feet away. Doesn't go. Not quite high enough. Yeah, not a bad look. I mean, Alex likes that shot, that little mid-range pull-up jump shot. The Leopards have had two stops in a row, but they haven't taken advantage. Much. Much pull up. No. Well, I'll have to live with that one. I'm not sure that's his strong suit. Jaworski. Jalice. Nice pass. Up and in. What a nice pick and roll. Jalice, the recipient, the pass. Comes from Petrie. Yeah, and the catch and the finish, that gives your guard a lot of confidence. Good block by Miles Cherry all over the ball. Watch out, Pallas. Lafayette's offense putting a lot of pressure on the Princeton defense, and oh boy, turnover. I think Pallas, lost, yeah, he lost the handle. He did. Too far. <laughs> yeah. yeah, by about a centimeter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, come on now. Live by it, die by it. Well, the Tigers have been sitting on 68 for a bit. Jalice, 18 feet away. He does. Soft touch. Drop. Impact player, Gary. You had it. Palace was 16. And that wasn't a slam dunk. Paulus Jalice being an impact player. Leopards back to within three. Much hands it off. Stevens. Stevens up. Stevens no. Good defense. Leopards with a little double team. Miles Cherry helping out. Good job by Miles Cherry. Kind of draw a line in the sand there against Miles Stevens. Jaworski. Again? Again to tie it? No, doesn't go. And we're going to get a foul on Miles Cherry. He went straight up for the ball. Now Kennedy's down. We're going to call a timeout when we come back. We'll see how Kennedy is and see what the call is. Stay with us. Times. Wow. Incredible. They had two at the half. Lafayette had one at the half. Is it safe to say that Princeton... Well, Kennedy's okay. He's going yeah. on the line. Is it safe to say that Princeton doesn't beat themselves? Yeah. 
Wow. Kennedy is 5 for 5 from the foul line. 27 for 28 on the year. Well, well, well. There you go. Here's a shocker. Kennedy now with 17 points. Did not get his 18th. Leopard's down by 3. Looking to try to get Kyle Stout locked inside against Kennedy. He's got about a 4 or 5 inch height advantage. Jaworski, he's also got an advantage. Look Eight at on the shot clock. Now they got to be concerned. Put up by Hastings, and it won't go. Tapped out of there by Lucas Jarrett. Yeah, Lucas Jarrett. How about Morales guarding Jarrett? Let's try to get him down in the post. They're trying. There it is. Got to make a move on the little guy. Why not? He did. He'll get fouled. Go to the line. Foul on Morales. I mean, Morales gives you all those intangibles and, and the tangibles on the offensive end, but invariably he's got to guard somebody. And how about 6-7 Lucas Jarrett? That's great recognition by Lafayette and great recognition by Lucas Jarrett to get on that post and demand the ball. Ricky, our director tonight with the RCN television team, we're glad to be back doing Lafayette basketball. Rick's been on vacation, but it looks like he hasn't missed a minute. Oh, these he's guys pushed every right button tonight. How about the side Good job by the crew. Yeah. All the replays right on, right on the money. Jarrett drops the foul shot. Can get his ball club to within one. They trail by 16. How about this turnaround? Got it. Jarrett with four points. Leopard's 15 for 20 from the foul line. Princeton's got its starting unit out there, Gary. So, Well in. Did you see him switch his hands in midair? I don't think he's hurt. If we if we get a chance to rack that one up, I mean, this gives you a reason why he's impossible to guard. Let's see so the we... Leopards with one timeout left. The Princeton has one timeout left. As we get down to crunch time, here comes Cherry. Here comes Jalise. Here comes Petrie. That last move by Kennedy to the basket ought to be illegal. <laughs> My Speeding goodness. ticket, maybe? Uh, yeah, something. It's got to be a violation. It... Change the rule. Suffering. You know, Princeton kind of ratching it up, ratching up the defense again. Eight to shoot. There it goes. Petrie inside. Petrie up in. <laughs> That'll count. Loves... Alex Petrie with a bucket. Petrie now with 13. He loves the challenge, doesn't he? I don't think we mentioned that Palace Jalise has another double-double, back-to-back. Hadn't had one since his freshman year. Now he's got back-to-back double-double. Oh, there is Kennedy again. Wow. Senior taking over down the stretch. Princeton hanging on by its fingernails right now, but Lafayette keeps charging, Gary. Jalise with 10 rebounds, 16 points. Trying to tie it up was Zaworski. It's a great move off the high post. Just couldn't get it to go down. Kennedy. No. Out of bounds. It'll be La Lafayette ball. That's off of Ariga Guzzo. Timeout down on the floor. 72-69. This one has not been decided. When we come back, Olivia will talk to us. Stay with us. A very, very physical, very athletic Princeton team. I know that he wants to win. This would be a huge win for so many reasons for the Leopards. Stevens gets it back. Petrie. Petrie 16 feet away. No. Boy, I'll tell you what, nothing's easy. Princeton, they seem when they get ratcheted up defensively, Gary, they use that quickness that we see on offense so effectively on defense. Pump fake. Tough pass. Got away with it. Llewellyn, no. Ball's loose. Still loose. Finally grabbed by Ari. Ari Riguza. Yeah, we haven't seen a lot of that. Lafayette's done a good job keeping him off the offensive glass. But boy, I think that might even be his first offensive rebound. And if so, it came at a huge time. 
Llewellyn. Outside Morales. Seven on the shot clock. That's Morales right. checked it out. Put it up. No, that's an air ball. And a shot clock violation, but it went out of bounds. How about the defense? They, they had to play 60 seconds of defense that time, Gary. They stopped Brinson on the first possession. Ariru Guza gave them a second possession. And Lafayette played defense for the entire shot clock. Foul is going to be called on Miles Stevens, his second. Lafayette to the line to shoot two. Paulus Jalis has had a good night, 16 points. Palace with 10 rebounds in the Rosemont game, 15 and 10. It's, Boy, exactly. We yeah. have our two-minute warning. Exactly. <laughs> you know, exactly two minutes. You know, you talked about Paulus Jalis being the impact player, Gary, and we understand he had a double-double as he continues to stroke it tonight. Um, he had his first, he had a double-double against Rosemont. Say what you will about the competition, but anytime a player can just start feeling good about himself, about the game, uh, it carries over. And it clearly has done that for Polish Zelis tonight. I have to give you a lot of credit, too. When we talked about this ball club before the Rosemont game, you told me how important it was going to be for the Leopards to get production out of the middle of the offense. He is the middle of the offense. Yeah, he's got the girth and the offensive skill set. Miles Cherry gives them the same thing, but he's not quite as polished. Doesn't face the basket as well as Polish does. And a thanks to Randall Miller for pointing out a couple of numbers that uh, have become very important here in the second half. Down inside, a Guzzo. Uh, anytime they need a bucket. That's the X factor here. That could be the difference in the game. They can throw it down to him anytime they need a bucket. He now has 12. Leopard's down three. Haven't had a three in a while either. Now we got a whistle, and Fran's going to call a timeout. And partly because he didn't like the flow of the offense, partly because it allows him to get a couple of good offensive players back in the game. Uh, even though Lehi beat them, they beat them without Kennedy and without Luella. I was wondering if they were going to put Morales in the game. Got one. Got one. Ah, great look. I was wondering, Gary, who Morales was going to guard, but wisely Mitch Henderson for that defensive possession kept him out of the game. Uh, pick and roll, watch out. Wow. What a physical specimen Ariri Guzzo is. The lead is now five. The first time he touched the ball tonight, he scared me. I mean, he was just so big around the bucket. Paulus Jolis, yes! Wow, only a two. Had his foot on the line, but that's a big bucket. Keeps it a one-possession game. He has 20. Leopards need a stop. EJ on Llewellyn. And they'll call a timeout. So Princeton has one left. A, a, a score here, Gary, really makes it difficult. I mean, it's not over, but take a look. The Patriarch is up there with him. Matt's back. Matt Panto worked here for a number of years at Lafayette. Now yeah. working with the Ivy League. Home for the holidays. We wish all of you a very happy holiday season. We will be off now until January 3rd. Lafayette needs a stop desperately at this point. Eight on the shot clock. Here we go. Kennedy has it. Three on the shot clock. Oh, it's a huge shot. Doesn't go. Rebound. Oh, Miles Cherry fought hard to get that rebound. So many contributions from so many players. Jaworski. Jalees. Jaworski. The game, the, oh, it's up and in. It's a one-point game. Jaworski with 15 points. You can hear Mitch Henderson. No threes, no threes. They gave up the layup. There's a foul. That's okay. Needed to foul. Jalees, that's his third. They will get two foul shots, but they're only up one. Plenty of time, 10 seconds, especially with players like E.J. Stevens and Justin Jaworski and Alex Petrie. They can go the length of the floor in a heartbeat. Miles Stevens at the line. He is a one for four from the foul line. There you go. And uh, Princeton with a clever defense, uh, defensive Sequence right there, Gary. Obviously did not want to give up a three. 
Jaworski recognizing time and score took the two right away at the line Miles Stevens 76 percent Princeton the night eight for 13 from the foul line there's Mitch Got it. I would say they have some weapons this Princeton basketball <laughs> team This one even bigger Got them both big foul shots by Stevens. This is where that lack of then they're gonna take the foul They're gonna take the foul ah. We talked about this last game Or did they have one to give no, no they don't that's no. one and one so they're gonna play the uh, the three point two point game here so Lafayette's gonna put in their biggest team to try to get a rebound Princeton. Or at least defend an inbounds pass Princeton will do the same not only does Princeton have to put their bigger players in to make sure they get a rebound They got to put their best free throw shooters in this Lafayette will foul right away well, if he makes both foul shots, they'll get a chance to bring people in. At the first, Jaworski was 16. Leopard's 18 for 23 from the line. I think it's Stevens out. Interesting. Leopard's now up to 82%. I'm sure they're thinking free throw shooting with Stevens coming out. Even though he made those last two. 9.2 seconds on the clock. Oh, no, Justin, you got to hit, hit the, the rim. rim. Got to hit the rim. Unless he was thinking he could bank it hard off the gla off the rim. But Justin should know that. Well, I think that's what he tried to do. Yeah. He knows he has to hit the rim. Now they have to foul right away. and A couple of made Princeton foul shots, and uh, that should close this one out. They only make one? Who knows? And guess what? It's going to be Kennedy. Who just missed probably is only missing the next month. Wow. Well, hey, let's put this. Let's put the curtain down at that end. Coming up, the post-game show presented by the Maroon Club and our player of the game presented by Coca-Cola. As Olivia will be talking to the coach, and our player of the game will be Palace Jalice. Back-to-back double doubles. The more senior members of our audience will remember the big white curtain down at that end. Uh -huh. That seemed to be an extra defender late in the game when free throw shooters would go down there and the game on the line. The cursed curtain. So we need Kennedy to cooperate and miss one to have a chance. 7.2 seconds. And then Petrie already is picked up by Llewellyn. Got it. 22 points tonight for Kennedy. Just a terrific player. Career high, 32. He's now over 1,400 points. 1,403 in his career. And that one should lock it up unless the Leopards get fouled on a three-point shot. That one will go. Jaworski drops it. Foul right away. Take, maybe take a foul before they throw it in. You know, Mitch is going to get a timeout just to make sure they inbound it. Boy, look at this lineup. They're going to bring everybody below the free throw line. Got to hold them here. Oh, there's the old. Oh, knocked out of bounds. Yeah. There's the old throw it along the baseline. Now they can't run. They lost a couple of tenths of a second there. See, after a score, you can run the baseline. Now they can't. So Morales. Oh, look at it. <laughs> Good guarding Morales. I think he's trying to take away his vision. Oh, almost stolen. Wow. Almost. And now uh, Isaac Suffern is shaken up. Did he catch it? I think it caught an elbow to the midsection, I think. Or lower. Or lower. Yeah. Boy, he gave it an effort, though, didn't he? Almost. Oh, that, that was a bad angle pass. It was a little desperation time there for a few moments, getting that ball in. One second on the clock. Kennedy will go to the line. Coach Henderson had a few more gray hairs as those seconds ticked away. Hey, Gary. Yeah. Heck of a performance by the Leopards. I agree. I mean, it's this they needed. This is a very good. This team has wins over George Washington. 
uh, you know, and and uh, and they've played so competitive games against St. John's, St. Joe's. They beat Iona. Oh, oh boy! How about well, a, there's I, one second. What can we hope for? Well, you know, it doesn't matter because they're going to have to shoot a three anyway. If they get one off, I'll tell you what. That, this is a question. Do you miss the shot? You have a better chance inbounding the ball than you do getting yeah. a rebound. And you're right. You're right. Let's see if he doesn't miss this one. I, I think you miss it and let people scramble for the rebound. No. There's no percentage in it. Look at this. Good if it goes. And it does not. Lafayette will lose a heartbreaker. 81 to 79. We'll be back with a post-game show. Stay with us. <laughs>